Let's go. Hello there. Welcome to the Greenup Morton Weekly Update, a sponsor to Climate Tears, the auctioneers. As you know, we spoke to the departing Bob McHugh last week. Incidentally, thanks for the feedback on that. Very, very positive. As Bob directly who the mental character were in the Greenup Morton dressing room just now. And without hesitation, he mentioned my special guest today. So I'd like to introduce the mental Calvin Orsi. Calvin, how are you? I'm good, Jerry. Thanks for having us. How are you? I'm very well indeed. I obviously haven't got a razor, but I'm going with the look just as it is. A bit like yourself. Ah, oh, you're looking sharp on me, Jerry. You're looking good. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Listen, did you see the Bob interview last week? Eh, uh, I did. Uh, my mum heard it, so she's got me as if they were speaking, they were speaking about me for hours. I watched a 20 minute video to hear a, a 10 second clip of it. <laughs> I, I, listen, that's fame and fortune for you. I know, I know. Bob could give a heads up. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, he did say you, you're going to be a fan's favourite, which I think you've kind of become. And he also said you're a very good footballer. But he did say that you were one of the mental characters in the dressing room and he wouldn't like to see stuff in the dressing room that he'd seen from you and Cameron Salkild. Would you care to elaborate on that for me? <laughs> eh, I think we're allowed to say personal at the stuff, but it's... Uh, it's a brilliant change and the boys are brilliant. Wild, there's a few wild, I'd say. Big Sam, the goalie, and Cammy, they two are, they're nuts, they're a duel. They, they're the cramped twins, so I think they beat shame, but I'll try, I'll try and match them sometimes for a wee laugh. <clears throat> Camaraderie is very much what dress rooms are about, and that certainly seemed to be a, a, a turning point uh, for Morton this season, was the camaraderie in the dressing room, particularly into the second half. Uh-huh. I know, I... See uh, the form that we started taking. I think that's all we do. We just how good our unit we are together, and just just the, the fight around the group. Everybody working for each other and willing to go to lengths for each other. Definitely, I think that's a big, big part of it. <clears throat> Quite frustrating for you because you had injuries um, at the start of the season, and then you really came into your own in the second half. And just as we were gaining that momentum, it all stopped. It always seems to be something like that, didn't it? It's, it was just once I got my once I got into second gear and I was the gaffer and, and Anton had brought me up to full full standard well like, at full time. I just started kicking on and it, I wish it went a wee bit longer, but what can you do? It's out of our hands this. <clears throat> Certainly any time I saw you at Capolo, you were in the gym working out and, and beefing up a wee bit and trying to... Because that was one of the things that the manager was saying to me, that you need to kind of muscle up a wee bit. Uh-huh. Well, the, the way the gaffer sort of his style and he likes, I think, old school strikers, people that are not afraid to put themselves about and work hard, just everything off the ball that he would maybe want. So I was just, if I was going to play that game, I was like, I need to be physically strong and... If you're getting battered about it, no, you'll not feel it the same way. So I thought that was the right thing to do, built myself up. <clears throat> and of course, you get a couple of goals as well, you were piling into that as well. But I mean, where do you see your favourite position? Uh, a striker for me now is, is brilliant, I really like it. I've, it's, I, I don't know, I, I've, I've really started to enjoy it. The, the gaffer sees me as a striker and... I was after this season I couldn't really see myself playing anywhere else now. I like it, I like I like battling, I like the physical side of it. I just for me that's that's I would say that's my position now. <clears throat> now of course at one point in your career you were at <coughs> St Mirren uh, and then you saw the light and come down to Greenock. How have you found the transition coming down to Greenock from any previous club you've been at? Eh, I'd see, for me, I've actually enjoyed it a lot more here because you know, I've led more of the gaffer and a lot of the older players and stuff have really, really, like, they've actually coached me. Like, a lot of people will do this, do that. The gaffer's actually took his time. It's, it's probably took a long while. He's probably had a few better move, but he's really, he's step-by-step step helped me and it's, it doesn't realise how much that's helped me. I'm not the brainy, so once you tell me a couple of times, it eventually sinks in, so... I think I'm getting to that stage. With a few weeks off, so we might have a few more months of coaching again, so we'll see. <laughs> I'd, well, I'll say one thing, you're looking pretty fit. How are you coping with the lockdown? Well, am I looking good? Uh, looking no, buff? <laughs> no, I'm good. I've just been, I've been running every morning. We're cutting into the running time today, but uh, I run every morning. Then, uh, my friend just stays, 
stays like a couple of miles away, and then we just go and he's got a wee dumbbells and stuff and gym in his back. So that's really helped me a lot. You know, he, he lose my strength and stuff. So uh, that's been a good help. So I'm just trying to stay as muscular as I can before I go back. <clears throat> Apologies for cutting into your running time today, Calvin. What about the football side of things? How are you managing to, to work on your football skills? Yeah, well, I've been, we've been going down the park and stuff. There's a, a, a park at Mabbit. Shouldn't be saying, we'll jump the fence. Sorry, it's got some leisure centre. But uh, we've been just in there and we've been, we've been playing five or seven. We've been playing a wee bit of summies, just working on a touch and that. We've been social distancing, we've not been tackling. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, that's that's helped me a lot as well because it's important, not just physically, technically. Obviously, you can't be be losing it; you'll be miles behind. <clears throat> targets for next season, personal targets for yourself, I'd imagine to get in amongst the goals, etc. What about the challenge for the club next season? What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I think as a team, I think we'll just keep getting better. That's what I personally think. I don't. I can't predict where we'll be, what we're going to do in the cups, but I know. The, just the team that we are, we're going to get on. I think we'll be better again because we're just we're really starting to gel and it's getting to that point where it, things will start coming off for us. So I'm looking really forward to it, um, personally. <clears throat> yeah, because the last time I spoke to you on the weekly update was back, I think it was February or so, and at that point your your contract negotiations were ongoing. And I was delighted to see that you'd signed the contract. So having that commitment to the club, obviously very important for you. Uh, no, definitely, and to the manager. Um, oh, sorry, this is a decline. For, sorry, I a phone call came through there. No, I owe a lot to just not just the club as well, but the gaffer, he, he gave me a helping hand when I was at part-time, he gave me a chance. So for him, I'd never, I was never going to. I, I, I owe it to him for another season and how long he wants me. So... I'm thankful to him as well, and the club. It does seem to be a feature of, of David Hopkins and his, his backroom staff that, you know, a big, big part of their job isn't just getting results, it's developing players, and you're one of those guys that's come in and has really developed under their, their wing. Uh, no, definitely, that's what I was saying at the start as well. He's, for me, personally, I can't say for anybody else, but for me, he's been very, very good. He's just, he's, he's just, he's just took me step by step and shown me... For me being a winger as well and coming to be a striker, it was technically it was fine, it's fine putting myself but I was always good at that. But just positional wise, I was a wee bit all over the place at the start. I mean, I might be these people are watching, I might still be, but I mean, he's, he's really, really helped me. Having him, Bob, Sutton, they've all they've been really, they've all teached me. And I'm just trying to just learn off them all the time and stay out, encourage you to do extra shooting and stuff. It's just, for me, it's just. This, the club's been, this is the best I could have done for myself. It's the best place I could have went. And I'm so happy. I can't wait to get back to it. <clears throat> One of the features of your game, certainly something that I noticed that a lot of fans have commented on, is you know, you're very brave. You'll, you'll stick your head in wherever it has to go. Maybe that's because you're a mental character, as Bob McKee said. But is that a very much a feature of your game? I, I think I'm more just scared of going back into the gaffer, knowing that I pulled out a challenge. So <laughs> I think I'm more scared that some of these set or halves can believe me. The one him losing his top. Uh, but no, I, I just I just try and be as brave as I can. Just put myself about, and I know people are, are taking time at their week every week to come and see us, and I think that's the the least I could give them is everything I've got. So that's that's just my way. I'm competitive, and I think it's either got, that's you or it's not. Long well, may it stay that way. Um, listen, the legendary Chris Buchanan got in touch with me and asked me to ask you a specific question about the fans singing your name. First of all, does that motivate you as a player? Uh, I, first, first when I heard it, to be fair, I was thinking, I was thinking there's a Sunday Callum or something in here. They've maybe got the, they've maybe got the name wrong. And then eventually I was listening to it and that's oh, that's brilliant. Now, what, what a buzz that was. Brilliant. I could see it and I came off and as well my mum took a video of the of the fans doing it inside as well at Queen's and she was just she was like brilliant. It's just it's the type of stuff that you play football for into to be people recognise it. It's nice. I think the fans are brilliant. It's just it's a great atmosphere. I love it. What is the song then? Uh, wagon wheel is it? Uh, you want a few bars, is that your button? I absolutely want a few bars. You can give me them. 
<laughs> is it rock me mama like a wagon wheel we got him for nothing what I can steal hey <laughs> hey Calvin all serious <laughs> Well, this face, you're not going to get on Britain's Get Talent, mate, so just stick to the football. But you've enjoyed your first season. I know you've had the frustrations, but you've enjoyed your time at Capital so far. Uh, ah, it's been brilliant. Brilliant. I loved it. So I'm buzzing to see our next season takes us. <clears throat> be good. And have you got a message for the Morton support? Pardon? Have you got a message for the Morton support? Um, I just keep singing my name, that'll keep me going. <laughs> well, Cameron, listen, it's been great talking to you today. Um, really apologise for cutting into your training time as well. No worries, you're a top man. Cheers, Jerry. All the best, Calvin. Thanks again for joining us. And thank you for joining us once again on the Bureau of Morton Weekly Update, as sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers. <laughs>